Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. So about four or five months back, I had a brand new guitar company reach out to me and to ask if they could build me a custom guitar. And I had actually worked with one of their employees who had just branched out to start his own business here when he was working with another company that also sponsored an episode. So since I was kind of on friendly terms with them already, I said, all right, let's go ahead and do this. So he asked me what guitar should he base this off of? So I thought I'd give him the challenge and I told him like a spotlight special or a the Les Paul or something to be really cool. So we'll have to see what they came up with here. So the brand we're talking about today is Valiant Guitars. And we'll learn a little bit more about them after we get our first glimpse of this because they just really wanted to get my opinion on where their quality is. And that's the whole reason for them sponsoring today's episode. So first off, I can already say, Fantastic case, guys. This is much better than that Ibanez custom shop one we had. I mean, it looks like it got a little bit beat up in shipping, but I like all the bumpers they've got here. This is really solid construction. But inside here, wow, that is super colorful. I like this. This kind of reminds me of like a gun case or something. All right. So we've got a little bit of red, a little bit of purple. We've got some orange. It's kind of a single cut shape. I'm digging some elements that they've incorporated within here. And I think at first glance, a lot of you guys might actually like not actually see what they tried to do here. But before we go too far deep into this, I want to tell you about their company, Valiant Guitars. Valiant Guitars is located in Ukraine. Yeah, that's right, Ukraine. This video was initially going to be me reviewing this one and then we were going to give one away, but now, uh, unfortunately, their shop was badly destroyed. They're trying to move all their inventory to a safe location and they're planning on doing a charity auction where they plan to donate all the proceeds to the Ukrainian army and all the relief funds and all things like that. You can check out their website for more information on that. It sounds like they're going to have that up and running soon, but I'm not going to be affiliated with it. But as of right now, if you want to help, you can donate. There's a little link thing up here. It should be a YouTube fundraiser. I'm hoping that's legit, but I think that's our best way to go on that. And I'm sure if you want to do your own custom order after learning all this stuff they can help you with that in the future but right now that is not their main goal but anyways this was a very newly formed company started by two brothers they're essentially a very small custom shop boutique builder they're not building low-end stuff i think the cheapest on their website's around 2000 usd but within the electric guitar range, they have three main models, the Soothsayer, the Smith, and the Jupiter. The Soothsayer, it's kind of like their Stratocaster shape. They're pretty nice. The Smith is very similar to what we're looking at here today. It's like a PRS meets Les Paul, but the Jupiter is pretty darn cool too. It's like a Jazzmaster Jaguar mix up. I really love the Fireborn. That thing is cool. It has such wicked wood grain on the top and the back. And then they also have some basses because one of the two brothers is a professional bass player. They call that the TNT. So they can do whatever you really want, but they've got some really cool exotic finishes. Go ahead and check them out on their website, and hopefully you can bid to win one of their guitars all the while helping Ukraine. So now let's check this thing out. So first off, we get a beautiful flame maple top. But what I'm noticing right away is like, I fully expected this to be really chunky because they have semi hollow versions as well as like solid bodied ones. And I thought I was getting solid body, but I think they played a sneaky on me. I think they gave me a semi hollow, but without the F hole, which I really dig. So this has been chambered. But to get the The Les Paul elements, they gave it the two piece maple top here, but they also flame the side. That is nice. I didn't see that when I first took this out. <laughs> I like the purple they threw in here too. They even went as far as putting the flame on the back. So they really did cap it off just like a The Les Paul. Now, obviously this isn't wine red or natural, but they've got those build elements correct. What's also incredibly fascinating to me is the fact that they took the time to build the pickups to have the height adjustment right there. Now it's not wooden parts, but I did not even expect them to do that. That's sweet. We even have like a uh, harmonica style bridge, which was definitely just above and beyond for them. But then furthermore, it looks like they put some purple heart up and down the fretboard. Now, if you don't understand, the Les Pauls actually have ebony rosewood, ebony sandwich fretboards. So I like that they were able to incorporate that here. It looks like we've got some locking tuners. Yeah, this is nice. Even got a nice little volute back here. And how many pieces? One, two, three, four main pieces, and then three little ones. So that's a seven piece neck on here. That's actually a quilty maple too. I'm also really digging the natural wood grain underneath all the flame on that. That's looking pretty nice. And there's a few other cool things that we can talk about on this guitar too, but we'll save that for the workbench as we head there now.
All right, guys, so I've been sent a lot of guitars, you know, for sponsored reviews and demos, but this is probably the most impressed I've actually been with one. But I almost feel bad accepting this. Like, this must have took them quite some time to, I mean, I, I'm i kind of speechless with just how much they crammed packed into this guitar. But at the same time, I do know they want me to be critical. So I'm going to, you know, nitpick a few things here. So hopefully when they get all back up and running, we can help them develop even better guitars. So our pickups in here are actually bare knuckle pickups. Those are pretty nice pickups. They have many different variations, but they're hand wound in the UK and they're very respected boutique pickups. I know some of their sets can sell for like 400, 500 bucks a pop. So that's nice that we have high quality pickups in here. These pickups within the circuit, the bridge is 8.1 K ohms, our neck position 7.02, and our middle for fun 3.76. But I was telling you guys earlier how they captured the V Les Paul style pickup rings here and they even had this. Okay, where they got mixed up is this one right here on a V Les Paul actually has a third height adjustment. Like these guys right here so it can tilt up and down. They utilize that as another mounting spot, which is fine. I mean, it, it gave the look that we were going for here, right? That's a lot easier to do than soldering on another lug right here to do that. And then you'd have to route out the guitar. And then if you ever swap pickups, you know, it gets kind of messy. But I thought for sure these were plastic, but they're not. I believe they're like a metal aluminum. So those are going to last a long time. Those are pretty nice pickup rings. So as far as our cavity here, you can see the long neck tenon. This is all completely flush. You can see your maple top with a mahogany core. That was very important to me. It still had to be the mahogany core, but just surrounded by maple. Then we can also look in our bridge pickup cavity and see pretty much the same stuff. Maple top mahogany core. However, since it's more of a darker red burst color right here, it just kind of all blends in together. But now check out what they did for the bridge and tailpiece. So they've recessed this into the top just a hair because that gets you more adjustment room here. And I could be wrong on this, but I believe they might've actually made this bridge by themselves because it's got that like handmade tooling marks back here. It's really lightweight aluminum, feels very similar to what they have right here, but it's just like the old harmonica bridges. They've got a lot of room for travel and it has a very similar adjustment post within the body. But get this, it's got Tone Pros elements to it. It's locking, you tighten that down to the post and then it doesn't move when you're doing string changes and stuff like that. I thought that was fascinating because I was trying to figure out why this thing not coming off and then I saw those. But then the tailpiece, pretty much the same thing here. So recessed into the body to kind of give it that faux string through vibe. But this definitely had to have been custom made or at least custom made for them. But that just secures to the top using four screws on the outside and then the ball end of your string goes in there and then gets locked like so. This is also ridiculously light. So who knows, maybe it's not actually chambered. It's just that light, which would be phenomenal. As far as our switch, feels pretty standard. Maybe a bit clickier than I'm used to, but I can't really complain about a clicky switch. But the grade of woods that they use for this, I mean, I'm just flabbergasted at how much this moves in the light. Like sometimes in static photos, it might not look that great as far as how much do you think it would actually move in person. But this is definitely one you have to appreciate in the flesh. I think that really captures it right here but I love the fact that they probably purposefully chose this eye wood grain formation right there because they know I love it. And it looks like we get another little small one over here, but I wanted to take a second to look at these knobs. So it's your typical kind of knurled style knob right here. And oh my goodness, I'm just seeing this for the first time. V and T. I just thought they were all Vs for Valiant guitars, but no, volume, volume, tone, tone. And they have that same locking screw mechanism to it. But the top of them actually appears to be like a wooden veneer that has like a hand laid inlay of some sort. That might be like a lighter colored wood inlay. No pick guard on this. I don't think it would really look good on this model. So I think they've done it well designing these without that because they have this like extra swoop cutaway right here, you know, kind of PRS in style. But we'll look at the sides of this thing in a little bit because, you know, the more and more I look at this, the more I see all the small fine details that I was hoping that they would do. The only thing if they want me to be critical on something is 
I'm not a big fan of the finish. Like it's cool, but this guitar, I think probably could have just been left natural and it would have been great. But then they would have had to have played with the natural flamed maple binding that they've got going on here and like dye that a color. So I get why they wanted to go a bit exotic. They also wanted to show off what they were capable of doing. I don't think I ever would have imagined mixing purple with sunburst, but <laughs> it's got an interesting flair to it. But moving on from our mahogany core maple capped all over body, we move on to our neck. So one of the more interesting features about the Valiant guitars is, you remember this? Fender used to do that, I think, what was it, back in 2018? That's because a bunch of other places were doing it. That is actually a truss rod wheel. So you don't have to have truss rod adjustment right here. You don't have to pop your neck off or take your neck pickup out or anything like that. It's just right here. So if you need to get it, you get your little tool and you just move it. I mean, it's just like what you're used to, but it's built within your fretboard quite an ingenious design. So from there, it looks like they just completely routed all of this out in order to put this purple heartwood in because again, I was trying to make them replicate the Les Paul specs. The rest of the fretboard is ebony. As far as our inlays here, it looks like abalone in the center with mother of pearl on the outside. So just a whole bunch of triangles going on here. And obviously they get bigger the more you go up the neck until you get to the Valiant branded one, which I like their logo there. But the only other thing I'd be critical on is I don't know if the headstock does it for me yet. Maybe they could work on a different font or maybe change up the styling here. That just doesn't quite scream out to me as perfect yet. They've clearly proven themselves to be excellent guitar builders so far with some very nice exotic finishes. But that's a small area that maybe I would suggest changing. For our scale length, we have 24 and 3 quarter inches, the 12 inch fretboard radius. And we've got a very special nut on this that measures 1.7 inches, 2.06 by the 12. First fret neck depth, 0.9 and 0.95 by the 12. So it should be a fairly thin neck, not overly thin though. Here's that neck profile at the first fret and the 12th fret. Just a nice roundedness to it. When I first unboxed this, I just thought that was regular binding material. It's not, it's flamed maple binding. Now you can't really see it too well here on the workbench, but just like that Ibanez that we had just looked at, it does have some flame figuring within it. So that was a very nice unexpected spec to find on this one. Revisiting the headstock, they also have that whole exposed maple veneer on the top here. So you've got some flame maple figuring right there. So that's another sweet touch. And I like the tuners they put on here. This is a similar style that Taylor uses on their high-end acoustics and they are locking. So that's also another nice benefit of these. Nice and gripping. But look at this nut. You can actually adjust each individual string up and down and it's made of brass. Kind of reminds me of like a locking nut system, but your strings sit on top of it. Now moving on to the back side. So I took these back plates off, fully expecting to see a chambered body, right? But unfortunately, we do not have conclusive evidence of that because this is all solid here. Now it's possible that when they chambered it, they just left this area B so you couldn't actually access the chambers, accidentally get dust and whatnot in there. Because I refuse to believe that this guitar is not weight relief somehow. They would have had to have had some insanely lightweight wood, which is possible, totally possible. But I found this absolutely hilarious. They have Fender branded pots for two of them. The other ones are 500K, regular CTS. But what's kind of strange is I don't think I've ever seen a Fender branded pot before. Fender doesn't even use them. So where are you guys getting those? That's funny. But take a look at your output jack. It doesn't actually have like a jack plate right here. It's just kind of recessed into the body. That's a nice little touch. So if it gets loose, you just have to tighten it up right here got some pretty interesting strap buttons on these. I'll have to try that out to see if I like them. They kind of look like Schaller strap locks, but I don't believe they are. And here's our toggle switch cavity. Nothing too much more to talk about there. But just in case you didn't notice, it's all shielded off. And these back plates are also aluminum or some very similar material, just like the pickup rings were. Same thing with your toggle cavity. And it looks like for the serial numbers, they are putting them in the back plate. Now this is a personal preference for me. I would actually prefer that on the back side of the headstock. I think a lot of manufacturers do it. I've just grown accustomed to it. Because for me, putting serial numbers on replaceable parts of the guitar just always weirds me out. But I mean, Fender's been doing that for the good longest of time, so I guess it doesn't really matter. That would be one personal preference thing for me. It looks like I have serial number SM22028. And it looks like we have a beautiful two-piece back here. Now, I'm sure that they could have carved it like a Les Paul Supreme, but that's not how a the Les Paul is done. Because the top does have a little bit of a carve to it. Like, it's not huge, but just enough that you will notice it. 
Once again, I especially like this uh, figuring here because it's ultra moving and we get some of the wood grain underneath the figuring. But we were looking at the wooden binding earlier. If you look along the edge of this, like right here, you can actually see there's more than one wooden layer. So you've got your flame maple on the side, that's just the exposed top. But before that, it looks like they have another stripe of walnut going along the entire thing. It's just in those purple areas, it becomes hard to see. And they have that exact same phenomenon going on here along the neck as well. The only place that you can really see it though is right here where they have the headstock joined onto the fretboard. You've got your brass nut. You can see that small walnut segment right there that just kind of gets covered up by the purple paint, which is pretty cool. But my mind was blown when I saw this. Do you see what they did here? They put a cap just like a The Les Paul has. Now again, it's on the purple finish area, so it's kind of hard to see. And if they did it up there, you can bet your butt they did it down here too. Nice. And of course, I hope you've been seeing just how beautiful these sides are this entire time as well. It looks like right here though, they just left it be the mahogany body because they couldn't really put a complete flame maple veneer over that area maybe, but they did leave it for the regular areas. So now we move on to the neck, right? I think I finally understand what they did here. You notice how I said there was one, two, three stripes of walnut in here? I think what they did is they multi-layered this neck up and that's where the additional walnut stripes come from on the side. So what we were seeing right there by the nut is actually like a continuation or something. It's either that or they just put that over top of it, but that also could just be like part of the neck. They just sandwiched that all together. Which this will definitely be a super strong neck, but I think we kind of sacrificed some of the cool flaminess of it to do that. But don't get me wrong, that thing still dances in the light. It's a very nice neck. And here's a closer look at their volute. They're going for their valiant symbol, I think, back there, but it's, you know, kind of reminiscent of how Martin guitars do their volutes. And here we can see the backside of our locking tuners. So what a fantastic custom build guitar. I mean, I think the only other thing I could maybe complain a bit about is the heel does feel a bit clunky. Like it's nice and refined and rounded, but a lot of modern designs will have like a little bit of a comfort cut right here. However, the reason they probably don't do it is then your binding will kind of look weird. So I'm sure they can do that for you if you want them to, but it's probably best to leave this one as it was. I mean, it's not uncomfortable to play by any means. I mean, you can get to all the frets. Another nitpicky critique is it looks like they're making these cases themselves. The handle's not in a very good spot in my opinion. It always seems to fall down instead of sitting level. So that makes it kind of awkward to hold this case. But now is the moment of truth where we find out how much this thing weighs. Seven and a half pounds, essentially. Seven pounds, nine and a half ounces. It's ridiculously light. It has to be chambered. I don't, I won't believe any other answer besides that. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead, plug it in and hear how it sounds and feels to play. I'm sold. I don't know about you guys. That's got a nice tone to it. It's very open and chimey is the best way to describe that. the best way to put it open airy and chimey so if those are the tones you're looking for that's what this guitar is delivering <laughs> 
it's the exact same thing as the cleans. They're ridiculously airy. It sounds great and aggressive. <laughs> I mean, that's the bridge pickup. You would hope that would be that, right? And then swap over to your neck pickup. You get pretty much the same stuff. And of course, the middle position should be like that too. Of course, all that's due to the fender pots in here, right? <laughs> yeah, bare knuckle pickups. They're, they're pretty nice inside of their guitars here. Now, as far as some critiques here, it's a bit neck divey. Like, it's not like I want to go to the floor, but it definitely wants to kind of rest parallel. These are indeed strap locks. I found the counterparts in the case. I just didn't want to install them right now. And so far, I found with this nut, if you're doing crazy bends, Sometimes your string will skip around in the slot. And you'll hear that little ping sound that you just heard. However, in regular playing situations, I never really ran into that when I, but when I was stretching the strings out, that's when that happened. Now that we know all about Valiant guitars, what are my final thoughts on this? Absolutely blown away. Man, you guys make a great guitar. It helps that you put great pickups in it that are boutique in their own right. And then you match that with your beautiful woods that you guys put on this thing. And you know, matching it to the specs that I was kind of hoping for. They were sending me some like behind the scenes shots, which I'll show you here on the screen, where at first it was starting to look pretty cool. But then I thought, oh, did they get off track a little bit? So I was a little bit worried about unboxing this. But let me say, very pleased with this final result. They really threw and jam-packed all the features that I was really hoping that they'd be able to do. Maybe the finish isn't my thing, but you know, it kind of grows on you. It's a little bit exotic and out there. But they really took some attention to detail on the side that you see while you're playing this thing. I mean, that's just so heavily figured. Love the way this feels. I mean, if you get a chance to try out a Valiant guitar, I would suggest it based on this one. However, when will you be able to purchase one of these? Uh, 
it's kind of uncertain for the foreseeable future, but you can check them out on their website. I'll leave a link in the description. And if you feel like donating to the Ukrainian cause, you can also find that attached to this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.